It is my job to keep you alive on this expedition, and I need your help to do that. Since I don't have time to properly train you, I'm laying down three simple rules. One, no one goes anywhere alone. Two, everyone must maintain constant communication. Three, unexpected things are gonna happen. When they do, no one tries to be a hero. Did you hear that? AVP is set present day on Earth, and it's about a group of scientists who go to Antarctica and they make an amazing discovery there. Seven days ago, one of my satellites over Antarctica discovered this. My experts tell me it's a pyramid. I am Charles Bishop Whalen. I you know, researched all the best people I could find, experts in their fields, and they go on this adventure into Antarctica, and that's where it all begins. My character's name is Alexa Woods, and she is um, an environmentalist. She has a small environmental group that she funds by taking expeditions on the ice in Antarctica, so she's very comfortable with being in those kind of hostile environments. My character is Sebastian. I'm an Italian archaeologist. Waylon found a pyramid, but I discovered that pyramid was a mixture of three different cultures. And I got so excited because it could change history. But the discovery they also make, they discover that the pyramid has been built by predators. The story is all here. Hunters discovered a backwater planet taught the humans how to build and were worshipped as gods. The Earth holds a very special place in predator society. It's where if you want to progress in the predator clans, you have to first come to Earth and you have to battle aliens. And that's what this group of scientists get caught in the middle of. We're in the middle of a war. They're using us as bait. It's time to pick a side. The way you make a great movie is you start off with a director who's passionate about the material and has to do it, and Paul's that person. Well, I think the, the genesis of Alien vs. Predator is, uh, is obviously Predator 2, where Danny Glover goes on board the spaceship and he discovers the Predator trophy case that has uh, human skulls in it, it's got a T-Rex skull, and of course, most exciting of all, it had an alien skull in there. It's like a dream come true for me to be here making this movie, absolutely. I mean, it's like, it's two things really. It's a dream come true in that it's an alien movie. I come to work every single day thinking, wow, you know, I'm making a movie with aliens and with predators. It's so exciting. And at the same time, it's incredibly intimidating because um, stepping into uh, the Alien franchise, which has you know, featured the work of Ridley Scott and James Cameron, um, the original Predator movie directed by John McTiernan. You know, I mean, fantastic movies. I can say without doubt we've made these creatures look better than they've ever looked before. In this movie, we're asking aliens and predators to go head to head, to meet head on, to roll around on the floor, to smash into statues, to break through walls, to attack each other in fight scenes that last five, six, seven minutes. And it required a lot of um, very specialized filming techniques to be developed. We built the hero alien. It's a combination hydraulic and animatronic puppet. It was built for a variety of reasons. It's really gonna give us a lot more use. The movements are a lot faster, a lot more powerful than what I can do in the suit. It will take three puppeteers just to give it all of these body and head moves. It will also take two more to be able to operate the arms, and a sixth person operates the computer console so we get this whole range of serpentine-like movement. Bruce here is working on the sculpture of one of the new Predator characters. These helmets now have more technology built into them. The idea is that there is a whole hunting clan of Predators, and we want to give them a little differentiation from one character to the next. 
This is what gives us all the facial articulation that that character is going to need when he removes his helmet. It's all radio control, it's batteries, it's motors back here, and we need a lot of mechanical ability here because those mandibles on the Predator have to open so wide. We're also giving it a lot more expression in the forehead, some expression in the nose, just trying to get a little more character. Just to see the two of them together in the ADI workshops was fantastic. I mean, it was just, it really literally sent chills down my spine to see an alien and a predator in the same frame. I'm Richard Bridgeland. Uh, I'm responsible for uh, creating all the sets, all the props, and the vehicles on this particular show. I've been working on this movie for about two years. He's been working on it literally for, for over a year. So there's been an awful lot of research going into the design work. The production design he showed me on this movie before he started shooting sold me and sold the studio in making the movie. Paul had a certain amount of very early concept work done that was, you know, just to give a kind of broad direction to things like the Antarctic whaling station. Certainly all the kind of spacecraft stuff. It was pretty exciting to actually have to build a town that, that exists in the Antarctic. The whole design of it is to make it very, very creepy, so you actually have no idea who's going to jump out. What we knew was that uh, set building in Prague was extremely good, so we made 25, 30 enormous and quite spectacular sets. The main pyramid that the adventure takes place in is this whole amalgam of different civilizations. There was carvings and sculpture styles and a whole hieroglyphic style that we developed just for this pyramid. They're just massive and they don't look like sets. They just It looks like we're really in a pyramid that was built thousands of years ago. And the pyramid begins to transform. Doors start sliding down. Staircases start dropping. It's like a Rubik's Cube, right? It transforms itself. Some of the exits from these places are like really small crawl ways. It's another aspect we wanted to get back to for, with the original Alien movie, the whole claustrophobia of it. Another interesting aspect of this as well was designing sets around creatures that are actually 7 foot 6 high. There's just been a tremendous amount of enthusiasm and excitement. I was very keen to cast the movie in the same way that Ridley and Jim Cameron cast their films, which was to go for a relatively no-name cast, but a cast of terrific actors. Cut! That's what I wanted for this picture. You know, first and foremost, I wanted really terrific actors because I think it's the actors that sell the horror. <laughs> and the actors that sell the believability of aliens or of predators. I mean, as an audience, I, when I was reading the script, you know, I was so scared, you know, I was uh, al almost thinking, you know, don't go there, don't go there. Be go! <laughs> but uh, I wanted to be part of the team in that moment, because uh, you love the characters. Come on, let's go! <gasps> It was a brilliant idea of Paul, to, um, I think, to bring in Lance Hendricks, and he gives us a, a connection to the early Alien pictures. I wanted to have some casting continuity between our movie and the Alien franchise. The evil corporation in the Alien movies is Wayland yutani Lance, present day, is the owner and the founder of the Wayland Corporation, Charles Bishop Wayland. Wayland is the guy that they pattern Bishop after, so he's, he's made all his money in robotics. When I heard it was being done, Paul and I met and talked, and he, he had the grace to explain the whole script to me for two hours, and it was very persuasive, very powerful. I really wanted to do it. What did you say this room was called? Sacrificial chamber. John Bruno, visual effects supervisor. Computers are just basically a tool in the filmmaker's toolkit. It's always best to get something in camera. One of the things I love about him is that John Bruno hates visual effects. You know, his approach is always real is better. And that can be incredibly complicated sometimes. So um, 
a lot of the stuff we're building is, is giant miniatures. You know, we have like a 15 foot high miniature pyramid. I mean, it's just enormous. This team is very much a team that John has brought on. One of the best visual effects teams in the world assembled, which I'm very excited about. Hey, I'm Richard Vandenberg, like a miniatures unit in Prague. The thing is about miniatures that you can introduce a sense of realism that you can't really introduce in CG as it stands. I think it's about the balance between CG and miniatures that makes the film believable. And I think if you get the balance right, then you achieve something quite special. This whaling station we've built full scale, but also we've built third scale miniatures. The good thing about that is you get real physics, you get real gravity working, and these things look as real as they can do without them being completely full size. Everybody likes the face huggers. We have them practical, where they do a little articulate the characters, which is done by uh, ADI. And then they do something in this film, which Paul, he wrote into the script, he really wanted. He says, well, I, I want to see face huggers leaping in slow motion after a target. In that case, you go to CG. One of the shots we did was uh, the hugger leaping at the predator, throwing his blade and splitting the hugger in half. This was something they wanted to achieve digitally to show the kind of full detail of what that would look like. But on the shoot day, we would take one of their practical huggers, walk it through the shop to get an idea of what the lights are doing, how slimy it looks, depth of field, the camera movement, so that we can recreate it digitally. I know it's great because it's smart, it's real, it's got an authentic, cool tone to it. Every time the predator walks on set, every time the alien crawls on set, it's a visceral, ugh. And no matter how often you see it, you don't get used to it. That alien is really creepy, and the predator is scary. You ugly son of a bitch!